everyone, it's Ivan from Badger.com out here for another gun review and today I'm talking about this right here which is the Noveski N4 Recon Gen 4. If you're unfamiliar with Noveski, I think that's probably kind of weird. They're probably one of the very first premium AR manufacturers from back in the day. Originally there was basically Colt which was the gold standard and then Noveski came on the scene basically raised the bar. They're a small American-made gun manufacturer over there in Grants Pass, Oregon. And with that, this is exactly what I said, the N4 Recon Gen 4. What does that mean? Well, the nomenclature with respect to the N4 is a designator for this being chambered in 5.56, and the Recon is in reference to barrel length. They have other ones, whether it's their Infidel or Leonidas, this one being Recon, 16 inch, and lastly, Gen 4, Receiver set has some pretty cool stuff going on. As far as kind of specs go, here's what we have going on with this rifle. As far as the barrel goes, as I mentioned, 16 inches. It is stainless steel with a one in seven twist. It is a proprietary barrel. They actually make there in-house. At the end of it, I have a Q cherry bomb, namely because I have a number of different cans that I run on there and it has a low pro gas block that is actually pinned under that handguard. The upper and lower receiver are made out of a billet 7075 T6 aluminum, both of which are type three hard coat anodized and then Cerakoted. This one in particular happens to be Cerakoted Noveski's Bazooka Green. The 15 inch Noveski handguard is Imlock with Imlock slots at 45 degrees all the way around as well as a anti-rotation pin. The gun uses a Noveski branded Geisley charging handle. The gun features ambidextrous controls, both the 60 degree ambi selector, as well as ambi mag release and ambi bolt release. And it comes with a ALG defense ACT trigger, as well as Magpul grip and stock. So what has been my experience with this N4 Recon? Well, after sitting there and filming it being built over there in Grants Pass, basically late summer 2020, this promptly went on me with the 2020 Coast to Coast Tour, making it to, I think, seven different range days with a lot of people in attendance and probably most every single person putting rounds through this. This has been shot a lot. And this thing did amazing across that entire coast to coast tour. Never once did run into anything. Pretty much the entire time I was running suppressed with a can on there. A few times, I guess I probably didn't, but then I was like, ah, everything's better suppressed. So threw a can on there and no, this thing did amazing all the way across. Did it get cleaned? Uh, we should probably figure out what the definition of cleaned is. Short answer, no. I think if this was cleaned at all, because maybe it got sluggish at one point, but I don't think it did. Basically, rear takedown pin, crack this thing open, blast it with some, uh, I think, like break-free stuff that Lucas Oil makes immediately relube it, close it, put the pin back in, and start shooting it more. This thing largely has just been lubed for I don't know how many thousand rounds. I'll show you to you in a minute, it's, it's pretty dirty. Told you, it's pretty dirty. And aside from some other range outings where I've taken this thing out, put some rounds through it to include under nods, which is always fun. Right. I actually brought this and ended up loaning it to fellow classmate at a three day course down there at Thunder Ranch with Clint. Amazing, epic course. And again, this thing was run. All I did was lube it, I think on day one. After that, I was like, whatever, it's just gonna keep running, so. It was shot quite a bit during that three-day course as well. What are my thoughts? Honestly, this thing is just a workhorse. Like it just runs and continues to run. Really amazing. 
I think there's a lot of pretty cool stuff that has gone into this. And something else that's really cool about Noveski is they don't have like an assembly line. Like one person just putting in like a roll pen all day long. They actually have some builders, one of which is Jeremiah, a giant of a man who built this thing right here. And the guys who actually build the guns are passionate about it. And on top of that, they're actually practitioners, like they actually shoot. And something that was really interesting watching this get made, well, yes, like it's a production gun, it's basically hand fit. Because of all the tolerances involved in this and the receiver set, everything like that, like literally sanding out these holes for the trigger pins and yeah, like literally hand fitting stuff in here. And consequently, when you pick this thing up and feel it, it is incredibly solid. And yeah, everything is just really nice and tight on this gun. Of course, some people's metric, is this gun a laser beam? Man, I don't know. Took this thing out there threw it up on tripod, rear bag, ended up swapping out optics, put something magnifying on there, and shot a number of five shot groups at 100 yards. Here's what I got with a number of different ammos. Shooting some Black Hills 69 grain. I had my first group coming in at 2.0 MOA. With my second group with Black Hills 69 grain coming in at 1.9 MOA. Then shooting some Black Hills 77 grain open tip match. First group came in at 2.17 MOA. My second group with a 77 grain open tip match coming in at 2.71 MOA with a flyer. Switching over to Hornady 223 55 grain full metal jacket boat tail. First group came in at 1.45 MOA. And my second group with a called flyer coming in at 1.75 MOA. Without that, would have been solid 1.0 MOA group. Next, switching over to some American Eagle, shooting 223 55 grain full metal jacket. My first and only group, because of ammo supply, came in at 1.50 MOA. Without that flyer, would have been 0.85 MOA. Next, shooting some Minutemen Munitions, 68 grain, boat tail hollow point. First group coming in at 2.08 MOA. Second group coming in at 1.34 MOA. Lastly, shooting some American Eagle, 62 grain green tip. My first group came in at 1.24 MOA. And my second group coming in at 2.34 MOA with a flyer. Ivan, what are your thoughts? Well, I had a lot of flyers. Eh, sometimes it happens. I go out there, I shoot it, I get what I get. If I have a called flyer, I have a called flyer. But that's what I ended up getting with this rifle and those different loads. Is it a laser beam? Yeah, it probably is, especially in someone else's hands. But again, that's what I got out there that day. One thing I will say is like pretty consistently, ironically, not with match ammo, this thing was below 1.5 MOA for me, which I think is awesome. As much as I would like a laser beam with whatever match ammo, I would rather have a gun shoot better with cheap bulk ammo, especially these days. Man, ammo is hard to find. But no, overall, actually really pleased. As I said, I'm sure a better shooter could probably get better groups out there, but that's what I got out there this day or that day with this rifle. What are my thoughts overall on this rifle? I think this thing's pretty rad. This is a just incredibly solid gun too. On the one hand, I will say it is not ultralight gun. Between the barrel profile, the billet, everything, it's arguably overbuilt, but it's also built like a tank. And getting to see someone like Jeremiah, who again is actually a practitioner, passionate about it, actually building this thing out, basically on a time lapse, I ended up filming and hanging out talking to him. It was really cool to see. Like it is someone that is dedicated to their craft, doing an amazing job. As I mentioned, a lot of stuff on here is basically hand fit and when it's all done, really, really solid rifle.
thing's pretty amazing. Not to mention, it just keeps running. I don't even know if we even sprayed this thing out on the Coast to Coast tour. We could have just continued to add loop, which is probably what happened. And it just keeps running, which, I don't know, pretty high praise with respect to guns, like something that just continues to run because reliability arguably is king. But overall, really stoked on this rifle. If you are looking for one, man, it's just hard. 2020, 2021, supply chain disruptions, everything else. On top of that, relatively small company, but they're out there. And I would say they're probably worth the price of admission. But if you appreciate my content and want to support it, greatly appreciate it. Whether it's liking and sharing videos or going over to kitbadger.com, picking up maybe targets, KBAT target pads, stickers, patches, something along those lines. Or if you want to support me directly, you can do so through Patreon. Really appreciate all of that. And if you have questions for me, probably not going to be down in the comments section, but over on Patreon, we have an active Discord. Happy to answer any of your questions over there. And as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.